Welcome, my name is Tim. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to diagnose a faulty run capacitor for the outdoor or condenser fan motor on the commercial air conditioning simulator. Now to begin with, we need to turn the thermostat to call for cooling. So we're gonna click on this little orange outline that'll turn the selector switch to cool. This will also turn down the temperature setting so it won't be necessary to adjust the arrows here. Now we're gonna to need to refer to that procedure guide at the top after each step. So now that we've done that, let's click OK. And next we want to assess which electrical loads are operating or how they're operating. And we can see that the indoor fan is running, so we can click yes here. Now when we get to the outdoor unit, we can see that the outdoor fan is not running. It's not cycling on and off, it's just off. So we're going to click on our procedure guide and click off. Now our compressor. Now if you notice that the arrows are spinning and then they stop and then they spin again, this likely means the compressor is cycling on and off. Now with the outdoor fan not running, that means we're not rejecting heat and the pressures are gonna rise pretty rapidly, causing the compressor to turn off on the high pressure cutout. So this is pretty obvious as to what's happening. Uh, we're gonna start by removing the panel Click it OK on the procedure guide, and we're going to take a current reading just to verify this cycling. So we're going to place the jaws of the clamp on at the glowing orange hotspot. And again, you can do this in any of the three compressor wires in the field. Again, it's a three-phase compressor motor, so you can measure amperage on any one of those wires. Now, if we look at the display on the meter, we can see that it's running at 30 amps, but after a short period of time, it goes to zero. And what's happening here is the high pressure switch is opening its contacts and breaking power to the contactor, which causes the contacts to open and of course, no more currents drawn. So now that we've verified this, we're gonna click yes. Now, before we make any checks with the voltmeter, we're gonna take out the wiring diagram to kind of come up with an inventory of possible causes as to what would not allow the condenser fan motor or the outdoor fan motor to operate. So we're gonna click on the condensing unit diagram and let's look at the condenser fan motor. Now we could have an open winding, either a run or a start winding. It's also possible that the capacitor could be faulty, which is in series to the start winding. And in addition, it's possible that this fan cycling switch is faulty and its contacts are not closed. So we only have three possible causes here. Now, our first step is to place one of the probes on T3 at the contactor. Okay, click yes on the procedure guide. And then our next probe is gonna to go to this yellow wire. Now, what this is gonna do is it's gonna check power to and coming out of that fan cycling switch. So right now, if you look, we're checking power going to it uh, from the yellow wire here to the red wire on the other side. And we do have 240 volts there. So we've got power coming to that fan cycling switch. So we're gonna click yes. Now next, we're gonna leave our red lead in place and we're gonna move our black lead to the connection coming out of the fan cycling switch at this glowing orange hot spot on this blue wire nut. And this is the fan cycling switch right here on the discharge line. And when we do this, uh, we can see we've got zero volts here. Um, but then if we wait, it goes to 240. Well, what's happening here is the contactor is opening its contacts. So we're actually seeing this cycling here as well. But the fan cycling switch is working as it should. So that's not our problem. So we do have 240 volts while the compressor is running. We're gonna click yes there. Now before we turn our power off and make some microfarad checks as well as resistance checks of the capacitor as well as the motor windings, I wanna show you how the high pressure cutout is cycling and how you can verify that with a voltmeter. So we're placing one red lead, it doesn't matter what lead you use here, on this blue wire nut coming out of the high pressure cutout. We're gonna place the other lead, the black lead in this case, on this yellow wire nut up here at the top. Now what that's doing is it's placing the leads directly across the high pressure cutout. And if we watch for just a second, we can see that the voltage goes from 24 volts to zero volts. And you'll notice that it goes to 24 volts when the compressor stops. Now what's happening here is the switch is open in its contacts and we're reading a difference in potential across it. Let's take a quick look at the wiring diagram and I'll show you what I mean. If you take a look at our meter lead placement, we're right across those contacts. Now if that switch is consistently closed, we should have zero volts there. There should be no difference in potential. But we can see in action here that the switch is opening. So we'll have 24 volts coming in and zero out when it's open. And of course the meter's reading the difference there. So that just simply verifies that 
the high pressure cutout is cycling, which we kind of knew that because the outdoor fan motor is not running. And that again is going to cause the pressures to rise pretty rapidly. Our next step is to turn the power off. So click on the disconnect, click OK. And next, we want to check the capacitor and then the motor windings. So our first step is to discharge the capacitor. Now, this is a very important safety step. And I don't suggest using a screwdriver like a lot of people do in the field. Using a screwdriver in some case can cause an arc flash that could damage the capacitor or the screwdriver. So we're going to click on the capacitor. We're going to assume that it's already been discharged for us. And we're going to isolate it or disconnect the wires from it. Once we've done that, click OK. We're going to take out our multimeter and we're going to turn it to microfarads and we're going to measure the actual value of this capacitor. Now, this particular capacitor is rated for five microfarads. Now, you can look right on the label on the side and it will give you the microfarad rating so you have something to compare it to. Our measured value needs to be within 10% of this. So we're going to place our leads at the connections on the capacitor. And when we do this, we see we have zero microfarads. This indicates a faulty run capacitor, and this is why our outdoor fan is not running. Uh, the capacitor is in series to the start winding, so our start winding is not getting any power, and therefore the motor doesn't start. So this kind of verifies our problem. We're going to click no on the procedure guide that we didn't measure five microfarads, and our next step is to replace the capacitor. Now make sure that you get the proper microfarad rating as well as the proper voltage rating. The replacement capacitor voltage rating needs to be equal to or greater than the old capacitor's voltage rating. And in addition, again, the microfarad value needs to be within 10%. So click on the capacitor, click replace. That will replace the capacitor, click OK. And then we need to reconnect it. So we're going to click on it again. We're going to reconnect the wires, make sure they're all secure. At that point, click OK. Now, we're going to turn our power back on, but let's close up the unit. And when we turn the power back on, we want to observe one full cycle of operation of the unit. Make sure everything's operating properly. You may want to pull the indoor filter and replace it if necessary. And last but not least, go up to the residence, or in this case, an office and make sure that cool air is being delivered to the space. And in this case, we can verify that by the blue graphic here from this ceiling register. Now, if you want to review any of the steps, you can simply click on this top left icon, and it will show you each of the steps in the process that we just took. So if you have any confusion, you can clear that up. Good luck on all your future service calls, and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Watching videos is great, but nothing beats actually doing. Head over to interplaylearning.com to try these sims for yourself in 3D and virtual reality with a free trial.